Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Let's stand right now. There will be more people coming. When they come in, let's let them find us worshiping God. Amen. Amen. Turn around to somebody and tell them, I'm glad to see you in God's house. Amen. Why don't we just raise our hands right now. Let's worship the Lord. God, we praise you. We worship you. God, you are great. You are greatly to be praised. I love you from the bottom of my heart, Lord. God, have your way in this room tonight. God, help us. Lord, our desire is to touch you. Our desire is to please you. Lord, we love you with everything that we've got. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Would you just clap your hands to the Lord? chains that binding it leads me to a place of freedom oh i come to worship i'm gonna lift my hands till i can reach heaven i'm gonna shout your name till the walls come falling down to worship I've come to worship 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Man, I just feel like seeking the Lord for a little bit. Can we do that? Can you just reach out? Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Sometimes I just like being in his presence. I just want to soak it up. It's one of those times I'm just so thankful to be in God's house. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're about to go before the Lord in prayer. Amen. Sister Tina's nephew had uh, a surgery, and God moved. God moved. Her, the testimony is on the Fountain uh, family page. I, I uh, recommend that you check that out. It is awesome. But we want God to just continue to strengthen and touch and help and, and bless. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, Brother and Sister Hardy, they've got a grandson that pastors a church way out west. And um, I grew up with Jonathan. And uh, you know, a, a couple of weeks ago, he he had a sickness come upon him, and we prayed, and and God's been touching, but He's just been on my heart. So I want us to to pray for him. We need to pray for the different shut-ins uh, that we have, that God would touch them and encourage them and uplift them. We need to pray for our church during this season, Amen. That that we would break out in a revival like we've never experienced before. Amen. Amen. I've, I've received phone calls. There's several um, unspoken requests. If you have a, a, a request, would you just raise your hand right now? Look, man, every hand in this place. Let's just pray. God, in your name, Lord, you know every need. You know every situation. God, you know everything we're going through, everything we're facing. God, I ask you to touch. I ask you to strengthen. I ask you to move. There is no God like our God. There, 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 God, right now, I'm praying for the Terry family. I, I pray that you would comfort them and strengthen them. I pray right now for Sister Tina's nephew. I pray, God, for Jonathan, where he is, and his family. God, every other need represented in this place. God, I plead the blood of the Lamb over every situation, over every heart, over every life, over every need. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. In Jesus' name, I speak healing. In Jesus' name, I speak a miracle. In Jesus' name, I speak an answer. I speak it. I claim it. Amen. Amen. Right? I wish right now you'd touch your own self. I can't touch you, but, but just lay hands on your own self. I rebuke discouragement in the name of Jesus. I rebuke doubt in the name of Jesus. I rebuke worry in the name of Jesus. I rebuke sickness right now. God, I declare healing from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. I declare an answer. I declare an absolute miracle in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, yes. Amen. Is it okay if I just do what I feel led to do? Amen. There, there are, are several. There's, there is a fountain. There is a fountain in, in the prison system. And there, there are people that are going to be watching this. Amen. I, Brother Charles, I want you to come up here right now. And uh, Br Brother Crawley, I wish you would come. And I want my dad to come. And we're just going to lay hands on him. And I want those that are going to be impacted by, stand right there. I want those that are going to be impacted by this ministry. I want them, he's, Brother Charles is standing in your stead right now. And I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're facing. But I know a God that's greater than your need. And so we're going to lay hands on him. And we're going to declare a miracle. Come on, would you just pray with me in the name of Jesus. Ha. Yay, 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 yay. God, touch him, strengthen him, help him, uplift him. God, touch these men where they are. Touch these ladies where they are. 
Oh, God, I'm declaring a miracle. I'm declaring healing. I'm declaring an answer. In the name of Jesus, let there be revival where they are. Let there be revival. Let there be revival. Let there be revival. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus' name. Oh, don't you love the Lord? Isn't God good? Isn't God so good? So glad uh, that Sister Twyla's, now I know she looks younger than him, but this is Sister Twyla's son, Brother Jacob, he's here tonight. and We love him so much. We're glad that he is here. And, and Amen. All of you that are here, Brother Rich, would you mind going and getting that offering plate? Because we want to be sure and give to the Lord. There's a lot of cool things happening at Fountain. Um, this week, um, we're going to be uh, having Brother Robert Martin is going to be preaching here this Sunday. Um, he is so anointed, and he is so good. You, you just don't want to miss it. Uh, he will be here for our 11 o'clock service, and uh, Brother Martin is... He's just a man with the next level anointing, and I know that he is going to bless our church. Invite somebody, uh, Brother Martin, I don't know. If you miss this, you're, you're going to miss it. Make sure and share our services. Uh, the reason we say that, I'm not, I'm not saying that because I want to be promoted because I, I don't need any promotion. But the more that you share, the more services uh, that you share, the more people are impacted by those services. And did you know there was a guy who, for whatever reason, uh, we were having a regular Sunday service. We didn't know it, but he shared it with a group on Facebook, some kind of a, a group, uh, People Seeking God group or something like that. And that one service had over a 1,000 more views than what we typically have. And so I, I would ask you, Pray about it and see what see who you can share these sermons with, these services with. See what kind of group, because I'm telling you, um, it, it could change somebody's life. And that's what we're we're in the business of. We're we're trying to connect people to God so that their lives can be changed. Amen. Come on, Brother Rich. Man, I, I think he said give or get beat up. That's what he said. I didn't say that. But uh, I, I think just having a, a guy as good as Brother Rich standing up here, it, it ought to encourage you and inspire you to give to the Lord. Amen. Can we bow our heads right now? And uh, Brother Crawley, will you pray over this offering? Yes. Jesus' name. Please come and give as unto the Lord. Amen. If you can't be here, please text to give. The information is, is right there on the screen. Or if, it, if you're watching Facebook Live, it's on there. God bless you.
Amen. I'm so glad to see all of you here this evening. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Isaiah chapter 41. And what a difference a week. Thank you so much. What a difference a week can make. Um, you know, I, our boys had never seen anything like uh, the snow that we had last week. And uh, Sister Crawley, after, after we uh, filmed the service, or I guess that's recorded the service last week, I decided I was going to take the boys out in the snow. And Ashton Johnson just kept saying, this is ridiculous. <laughs> You're looking around. We're not supposed to. This is ridiculous. And uh, we, <laughs> we walked. I mean, not just barely out of our little cove right there. And uh, the snow was so deep, it was wearing me out. I said, guys, we got to go home. I'm, I'm not built for this. So I, I, I walked out of my house to come tonight, and it was a nice, it felt like it was in the 70s. It felt so good. And I said, Lord, can you just keep it like this for, for the duration? Uh, he didn't answer me, but uh, we'll see what happens. Amen. I'm excited about what God is doing. Um, Isaiah 41, and uh, just one verse, verse 10, it says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee, with the right hand of my righteousness. Amen. That's all that I'm going to read tonight. Or, or at this point, that's all I'm going to read. But let's bow our heads and uh, let's just pray. God, we need you tonight. Use me. God, help me to say something that will help somebody. God, my mind. God, my tongue. God, I'm praying for our people. Help this word to take root in our spirits. God, I speak encouragement, I speak strength, I speak help. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. You may be seated. My title tonight is this, One Verse, Five Promises. One Verse, Five Promises. I, this past week, I was on uh, Twitter, and, uh, you know, the people I follow, uh, they, they inspire me. A, a lot of the different ministers, they'll, they'll post different things. And Brother Jerry Dean posted uh, on Twitter this week. He said, he said, this is just one verse, but it has five amazing promises in it. And so I, I reread this verse, and as I read it, I thought, my goodness, this, this just soothes my soul and my spirit. Five promises. And so uh, tonight I want to look at these promises because uh, not only are they in this verse, but they are for you. Amen. These are promises that you can claim. It was, it was old Papal Dyson that used to sing, every promise in the book is mine. Well, every promise in this verse is yours. The very first promise is this, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Amen. God is speaking here in tenderness, okay? He's not being mean. He's not being harsh. He's not being ugly. He's speaking with tenderness. But, but he does, even though he's speaking in tenderness, he does start with a command. He says, don't fear. That's a command, okay? That's not a suggestion, it doesn't say maybe you shouldn't fear or, you know, possibly you shouldn't fear. He, he just shoots you straight. Fear thou not. Do not fear. The phrase fear not is used at least 80 times in the word of God. Most likely because Isaiah knows the enemy uses fear. He, he uses this here most likely because Isaiah knows the enemy uses fear to decrease our hope and limit our victories. He sows fear because if he can sow fear into your heart, you'll start having panic attacks and worrying 
and, and be overwhelmed by bridges that you haven't even crossed yet. You haven't even gotten there yet, and, and you're scared to death of them. You know, fear is a human emotion that is triggered by a perceived threat. It is a basic survival mechanism that signals our bodies to respond to danger with a fight or flight response. As such, it is an essential part of keeping us safe. There are parts of fear. There is some, um, some good fear, okay? You, it, it's probably smart for you to be afraid of snakes. That's probably smart. It's probably smart for you to be afraid of, of uh, lions. I, I, I watched this uh, video the other day of this, you know, it said he's just a big old cat, but it was a man hugging and kissing on a lion. I thought one of these days that big old cat's going to get hungry enough and you're going to look like steak to him. You know, a, a, a good solid fear of, of some things is not necessarily bad. It, it can be essential. However, when people live in constant fear, whether from physical dangers in their environment or threats that they perceive, they can experience negative impacts in all areas of their lives and even become incapacitated. You can reach a point where you are so afraid that you can hardly move. You can't move forward. You can't move to the sides. You, you can't move. You are stuck because of fear. Now, I, I got this right here from uh, a, a medical article. Okay, this is not a religious article. I'm about to, to quote some things. It's called The Impact of Chronic Fear. Living under constant threat has serious health consequences. One, it has... Uh, negative impact on your physical health. Fear weakens your immune system. This is, this is the truth. Fear, the spirit of fear, you know, uh, chronic fear. It weakens our immune system and can cause cardiovascular damage. Uh, gastrointestinal problems such as ulcers and irritable bowel syndromes can be caused by fear. It can lead to accelerated aging, and even premature death. We're talking about fear. I had a, a doctor one time say, you're much too young to be having some of these issues that you're having. He says, what do you do for a living? It must be stressful. And I said, well, I'm a pastor. He said, oh, okay. You're like, I understand that. Okay, another, another issue from chronic fear, it, it affects your memory. Fear can impair formation of long-term memories. And cause damage to certain parts of the brain, such as the hippocampus. This can make it even more difficult to regulate fear and can leave a person anxious most of the time. To someone in chronic fear, the world looks scary and their memories confirm that. Then, uh, chronic fear can uh, cause brain processing and reactivity problems. Fear can uh, interpret processes in our brains that allow us to regulate emotions. Uh, read nonverbal cues and other information presented to us. Reflect before acting and act ethically. This impacts our thinking and decision making in negative ways, leaving us susceptible to intense emotions and impulsive reactions because of fear. It affects our mental health. Other consequences of long term fear include fatigue, clinical depression. P-S-T-D. No wonder we are commanded. Don't fear. God doesn't want you to live like that. God doesn't want you to live like this. He doesn't want you to live with these conditions. He doesn't want you to live in a situation where you're constantly tied up in knots. You know, it's like, it's like a string on a bow. You, you keep pulling and causing tension, eventually you get that tension uh, strong enough and that bow is going to break. That string is going to break. There's church folks that are living their lives that way. They are wound so tight and so overwhelmed by fear and anxiety and worry. They're like that string that's just about to pop. It's not the will of God that you live your life that way. It is not the will of God that this tension caused you to have stomach problems and, and migraine problems and heart problems. It's not the will of God. That's why he said, fear not. Fear not. 
But why should you not fear? Because the Lord is with you. That is a huge promise right there. The Lord is with you. To fully grasp the importance of this, you need to understand how powerful that God is. The Bible describes and depicts God as being all-powerful. The technical term for this is omnipotent. Amen. God is omnipotent. He is all-powerful. God's omnipotence means that there is nothing God cannot do so long as it does not contradict his own nature or law. God has power and authority over the universe he created from the largest solar system to the smallest particle. Amen. He's saying, don't fear, I'm with you. You've got a God that's greater than any diagnosis. You've got a God that's bigger than any obstacle. You've got a God that's bigger than any demon in hell. You've got a God that's bigger than any depression, any doubt. You've got a God that's bigger than any financial need. You've got a God that is bigger. Why are you living in fear? Why are you living there shaking? Why are you stuck in one place when God is able? He's with you. He's with you. I'm thankful for a God that's with us. Matthew 19, 26. Did you get my email, Brother Stephen? Good. Matthew 19, 26. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. <laughs> only believe, only believe. All things are possible, only believe. Woo! Amen. Jeremiah 32, 27. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Is there anything too hard for God? Evidently not. He parted the Red Sea. Evidently not. He spoke the world into existence. Evidently not. Evidently there's nothing too hard for God. Is this financial need too hard for God? No, it's not. Is what the doctor said about me, is it too hard for God? No, it's not. Is this problem I'm having at work, is it too hard for God? No, it's not. Is this problem that I'm having in my family, is it too hard for God? No, it's not. Amen. Revelation 19.6. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of many thunderings, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Isaiah 40, 28, hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. Don't you love the Word of God? Amen. God's omnipotence should be a source of rest and comfort. It should be a source of, of rest. I remember uh, my grandfather was struggling with something one time. He was there at his house, and he got to that point where, where the Bible says he never slumbers, he never sleeps. And uh, my grandpa said, Gene! He never slumbers and he never sleeps. She said, what are you talking about? He said, well, if he doesn't slumber and if he doesn't sleep and if he knows all about my problems, there's no need in me staying up all night worrying about it. I'm just going to give it to him. Just knowing that he's an all-powerful God ought to give you peace and rest. Amen. He is good. He is good. Because the all-powerful God is good, we do not need to fear how he will use his power. Instead, we can find comfort in the truth that he is working all things out for our good. No wonder the scripture says in Romans 8, 31, What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? If I know he's there, it's going to be okay. Amen. So that's promise number one. Okay, promise number two, Isaiah, back to Isaiah 41 and 10. Put that, put that up there for me, Brother Stephen. I like that too. You belong here. 
Okay. Starts out, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Then the next part says, be not dismayed, for I am thy God. Brother Wink, that, that's encouraging. Amen. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. What does is, what is dismayed mean? It means to break down the courage of completely, as by sudden danger or trouble, dishearten thoroughly, daunt, to surprise in such a manner as to disillusion, to alarm, perturb. That's what it means. I, I'll give you an example. My, my boys and I, uh, I don't know why they enjoy this so much, but they like... Uh, We've got this kind of thing that we do. They like going to the Waffle House. And uh, we started that because I couldn't get Braden to go to the Waffle House, but he loved bacon. So I said, let's go to the Bacon House. So we still call it the Bacon House. Amen. That's, that's called inspired. But uh, anyway, we go to the Bacon House. And what we do, we, we order breakfast at the Waffle House. And then I get my phone out. And on YouTube, I, I, I get uh, America's Funniest Home Videos on there. And, it, you know, it's clean, and we just watch funny videos. And our, our favorite thing that we watch, um, we, I, I don't take any joy out of seeing anyone get hurt. But for some reason, I love it when somebody gets good and scared. I love when someone jumps out and boom, you know, and that person, you know, they don't know what to do. In fact, my favorite of all time is a news clip where it's the morning news, and uh, there, there is someone from the zoo that has come, and they are a reptile expert, and they're showing uh, how long this snake is. Well, there's a table full of reptiles, and as, as the zoo guy is showing uh, the news anchor how long this snake is, all of a sudden a lizard jumps up and grabs hold of the suit of that anchor man, and he doesn't know what to do, so he just... <laughs> And he finally jumps. That right there, though, that, that's dismayed. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. I don't know where to turn. I don't know how to react. I'm dismayed. I'm shocked by what's going on. I'm shocked by what I'm seeing. I don't know which way to turn. I don't know whether to look down or up. I don't know, I don't know who to turn to. I don't know who to call. I don't know where to go. I am dismayed. The word rendered here, dismayed, is derived from a, a word, shah, S-H-A-A-H, to see, to look, and then to look about as one does in a state of alarm or danger. The sense of Isaiah 41 and 10 here is that we should be calm and, no, and, and under no apprehension from our foes. Don't be dismayed because he is our God. Amen. If he's not your God, then you've got a right to be dismayed. If he's not your God, then you've got a right to walk around confused. If he's not your God, you've got a right for, for every diagnosis to knock you flat or for every problem to knock you flat. But if he is your God, you don't have to be dismayed. I don't have to wonder, who do I turn to? Where do I go to? Uh, who do I trust in? Who do I believe in? I don't have to be dismayed. I know that he is my God. He is my God, and I'm thankful. And for I am thy God. I'm able to preserve you. I'm able to strengthen you. The God of heaven. You know, when you think the God of heaven is my God, and, and as he had all power, and that power was pledged to our protection, when you realize that all the power of the universe has been pledged to your protection. What in the world are you dismayed about? What is dismaying you? What is overwhelming you right now? If God be for me, who can be against me? Now, I, the question is, is he your God or not? And if he's your God, why are you living this way? Why are you living below the standard that God has called you to live? Why? Emotions ripping you apart. Not sleeping at night. Why? He's your God, isn't he? Amen. I like Zephaniah 3 and 17. I'm, I'm going to just give you a couple of scriptures. I'm trying not to preach because this is easy preaching material. 
Zephaniah 3 and 17, the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. Amen. He's not anemic. He's mighty. He's not a wimp. He's mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. Isn't that great? Isaiah 25 and 1, O Lord, thou art my God. I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name. For thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. He's my God. Do you understand? He is my king. He is my savior. He is my way maker. He is my provider. He is my comforter. He is my strength giver. There's a choir song we used to sing. It said, my God is more than enough. He can supply all my needs. He is my El Shaddai. He always looks out for me. Jehovah Jireh. He is my God. Amen. And then it goes, all of the earth is his and the fullness thereof. Everything that I need, you can be sure of. Jehovah Jireh. He is my God. And then they have a bridge. It says, so why should I worry about the highs and the lows, the ups and the downs, when by my faith I know my God is more than enough. Hey, I know it's a Wednesday night, but you listen to this preacher. Your God is more than enough. You just got to make sure that he's your God. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. Amen. Promise number three. Put it back up there, Brother Stephen. Isaiah 41 and 10. Don't y'all love Brother Stephen? Y'all need to pray that God gives him a good wife. Soon. I love you. Amen. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. Now notice this. Here's promise number three. I will strengthen thee. I will strengthen thee. Amen. Look, look with me at Psalm 73, verse 26. It says, My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Woo! <laughs> Woo! He is the strength of my heart. My heart on its own, it would fail. Some of the stuff we see, some of the stuff we go through, if it was just about my heart and my ability, it would fail. But he is the strength of my heart. Amen. Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. He's the one who gives me strength. You know, we sing that song, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. And if the world didn't give it, then the world can't take it away. Hey, listen to me. This strength that I have, the world didn't give it to me. And if the world didn't give it, then the world can't take it away. This is supernatural strength. Stuff I can't do on my own. God gives me strength to overcome it. Things that I can't put down on my own. God gives me strength to put them down. Things that I can't get over on my own. God gives me strength to get over them. Things that I can't accomplish on my own. God gives me strength to accomplish what I need. I like this. Isaiah 40, 29. He giveth power to the faint. Amen. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Have you ever been there? God, I cannot do this on my own. God, I've got a long ways to go, and there's no way that I'm going to get there if you're not with me. You've got to help me, God. You know, both the Old and the New Testaments, they declare that God gives us strength. You've got to understand this. You've got to understand this about God. He is one who never faints. 
He is one who never gets weary. He is one who never has any lack. That's our God. It's wonderful to know that that God is willing to share his strength with us. I'm going to say this again because I, somebody needs to be running the aisles right now. Listen, we're talking about a God who never faints. We're talking about a God who never runs in fear. We're talking about a God who never gets weary. He never gets tired. We're talking about a God who doesn't have any lack for anything. And we're also talking about a God who is willing to share his strength with us. Amen. I, I talk about this a lot. I, I, I had a house in Louisiana. We had this line down our driveway of live oaks. And some of those live oaks would have vines wrapped around them. Now, that vine on its own was so weak. I mean, any storm would have blown it over. Uh, that vine on its own, it, I mean, it couldn't have withstood anything. But it wrapped itself around that oak. To, to the point where the strength of that oak became the strength of that vine. That vine could then survive a storm. It didn't matter how hard the wind blew. As long as that oak was there, that vine wasn't going to come down. Do you understand? And that's what we need to do with God. We need to get so wrapped up in God. It does not matter how strong the wind is. It does not matter how cold the wind is. It does not matter how many enemies come against us. I'm telling you, you can get to the place in God where His strength becomes your strength. And His understanding becomes comes your understanding. Oh my God. I, I want that kind of relationship with him. Amen. There is though something we have to do to receive his strength. Uh, Isaiah 40 and 31. Amen. But they that wait upon the Lord. Amen. What's the translation of that? They that spend time in his presence. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew. Literal Hebrew uh, here means to exchange. They shall renew or they shall exchange their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Hear me right now. If we will spend daily time in the presence of the Lord, there is an exchange that will take place. We give God our strength as we praise Him and as we worship Him, and He gives us His strength, which endure, in, enables us to endure all the things that we have to go through. You want some strength? The best way to do it is raise your hands and lift your voice and praise God with everything that you've got. But 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 you're weak. I know I'm weak, but friend, if I can get his strength, then I will be strong. But you're weary. I know I'm weary, but if I praise him, he is able to give me strength. But you don't have the ability. I'm telling you, if I will praise him, I am getting yoked up with a God that created the heavens and the earth and the moon and the stars. Amen. Amen. God is able to give us strength. One writer said this, God is your strength in times of difficulty. Belief in God is not the recipe for an easy life. Somebody needs to hear this right now. Belief in God is not a recipe for an easy life. In fact, the reverse is the case. You are likely to face all kinds of opposition. I'm not trying to burst your bubble in here tonight. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. But it rains on the just and the unjust alike. I talked to a pastor in Winsboro, Louisiana. I didn't even think about the kind of weather they got down there. They've got people, they had more ice than they did snow. They've got people that it's been over a week and they still have no electricity down there. They, 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 and, and you want to hear something crazy? If, if you have a church and on the same line there is a bar, and if that line fell because of a limb with too much ice on it, there are churches... That are that have just as little power. I'm talking about electricity. 
as bars because they're on the same line. You know, it rains on the just and the unjust is what I'm saying. But the difference between us and them is this. I go through things just like they do. I get bad diagnosis just like they do. But even though I have to walk down the same path that everybody else has to walk down, that does not mean that I am by myself. And if I am not by myself, if God is there, I can make it. I don't like what I go through all the times. I don't like what the doctor has to say to me all the time. I don't like what the bank has to say to me all the time. I don't like what my enemies have to say about me all the time. But I know this. I know a God that holds my hand. I know a God that will never leave me or forsake me. I know a God that's able to take everything that I go through and turn it out for my good. Amen. Amen. Arnold Schwarzenegger said one time, whatever doesn't kill us will make us stronger. Y'all didn't know you were going to hear an Arnold Schwarzenegger quote tonight, did you? Amen. God clearly uses adversity to make us stronger. The key is, though, to run to God and not away from God in times of trial. Amen. We're talking about a strength giver. But you'd be surprised at how many people get that wrong. They go through something and they run away from God. They run away from the church. They run away from the man of God. They're going through something and so they, they quit church. That's not the time to quit church. That's the time to get to church. That's not the time to run away from God. That's the time to run to God. That's not the time to turn your back on your pastor. That's the time to run to your pastor. Amen. Because if you'll get a hold of him, he is able to bring you through. Okay, promise number four. I got nine minutes left. And then I'll probably take an extra 20. Maybe not. Promise number four. You got it up there? Yeah. Isaiah 41 and 10. <laughs> Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Amen. I will help thee. I, Psalms 121, verses 1 and 2. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Some of y'all, you, you need to be writing these scriptures down. In fact, if, if you'll email me, I'll email you these notes. Because some of these scriptures you need, you need this scripture right here. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Psalms 54 and 4, Behold, God is mine helper. <laughs> the Lord is with them that uphold my soul. I mean, I'm, I'm going to do this very quickly. I read an article, uh, a man named uh, Pastor Chris Russell, he gave a list of all the ways that God helps us. And uh, I was going to break these down further, but my time's running out. But I'm going to give them to you. One way that God helps us is he provides. He provides. One of the most amazing things that I have discovered over the years that I've been living for God is, is that God truly provides even in the midst of extraordinary, difficult circumstances. Hey, <laughs> Corona has been extraordinarily different. It's been very different. But the fact that, that God made a way for us to still have church, even when we couldn't gather in here together, the way that, the, 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 the fact that God provided to where we went through, we've gone through a year unlike anything we've ever imagined, and yet somehow through, through the blessings and the grace of God, we, we aren't going bankrupt, but in, in fact, God bless us, we made it through there, and we didn't end up in the red. My God, I'm about to shout all by myself. Amen. He provides. He provides. 
Amen. And one of the reasons our people are blessed is because so many people are giving. Because when you give, it shall be given. Hey, I wouldn't dare not pay my tithes right now. I would not dare not give to God right now because it is a link. It is connected to your blessings. It is connected to your provision. How does God help us? He provides. How does God help us? He protects. Amen. Even as God protected the children of Israel in the midst of the plagues in Egypt, I, I have seen God protect my family. He protected. I, I am telling you that Thursday night of last week, I was in a mess. I was in one of the worst messes I have ever been in in my life. If I told you the entire story of how we spent all those hours on that interstate, I'm talking about trucks spinning out in front of us, 18-wheelers spinning out in front of us, and, and the interstates being shut down all around us, and God miraculously making a way for us to go through it. I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm telling you, God protects. I've, I, I could testify so many times. I was driving down the interstate the other day in an 18-wheeler, a tire blew, and the tread of that big old tire went flying up in the air, and it was heading right for the, my vehicle. And all of a sudden, it hit the interstate, and instead of bouncing up and hitting my windshield, it just went flat. It just went flat, and we drove over. Now, you can believe what you want to believe, but I believe that my God took his hand and said, you're not going to bounce at all. <laughs> Amen. He protects. He empowers. He empowers. Amen. He empowers. Amen. Number four, he befuddles the enemy. Amen. No weapon formed against you shall prosper there's times when i have enemies and i i, I i'm one of these people i don't want to make enemies but every once in a while they, when you try to stand for what's right you're going to have enemies but i tell you what i tell you what's a waste of time is thinking how can i get back at my enemies i'll, I'll give you a, another example of waste of time how can i make them suffer no no there's some things when it comes to enemies that you just have to say, God, you don't have to take care of this. I don't have the know-how. I don't have the ability. I don't have the understanding. But God can handle your enemies way better than you can. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Number five, he builds character. That's something that God uh, does. God cares more about your character than he cares about your comfort. God cares more about your character than he does about whether you're having a good time. Okay, number six, God heals. Woo! Thank, has anyone in here ever been healed by God? Amen. Uh, number seven, God develops our wisdom. So much of what I've gone through has taught me. It's taught me. I'm thankful for that. Number eight, this is the final one. God gives purpose and direction. All right, number five, I'm almost done. Go ahead, Brother Stephen. Here we go. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Amen. Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought, what in the world does that even mean? I will uphold thee by the right hand of my righteousness. Barnes note says this, with the right hand of my righteousness, it means with my faithful right hand. The phrase is a Hebrew mode of expression, meaning that God's hand is faithful, that it might be relied on, and you would be secure in them. Amen. God's hand is faithful. You can rely on it, and you can be safe in it. Amen. Amen. Um, Jameson Fawcett, Brown Bible Commentary, it says, The right hand of my righteousness. This means my right hand prepared in accordance with my righteousness, faithfulness to my promise to uphold thee. Keel in Delish, uh, Bible Commentary in the Old Testament, it says, In the expression, by the right hand of my righteousness, the justice or righteousness is regarded preeminently. 
on its brighter side, the side turned towards Israel. But it is also regarded on its fiery side, or the side turned towards its enemies, or the enemies of Israel. It is the righteousness which aids the oppressed congregation against its oppressors. The repeated word uh, heaps one synonym upon another, expressive of divine love. Language is to con uh, uh, contracted to hold all the fullness of the divine love. And for this reason, the latter could not find words enough to express all that yet desired. In other words, in other words, that, that hand of righteousness, amen, if you're one of his, that hand of righteousness, you're going to feel love like you've never felt before. You're going to feel generosity. You're going to feel blessed. But if you are on the wrong side of that hand, friend, you better be careful. If you mess with God's, then you, you, you better watch out. I, I'm telling you, nobody can handle our enemies like God can. Amen. Let's stand. God promises to uphold us. More than that, he promises to uphold us with his righteous right hand. That means when you lose your footing, he's going to be there to hold you up if you'll trust in him. What I love about this verse is that we are told God will uphold us no matter what we're going through. His hand is strong. Amen. I... I love being a dad. I love these videos that y'all post with y'all's kids. I, I, think, I think that's wonderful. I, I saw uh, a picture of Sister Ira and uh, Brother Ricardo out with, with Rohan building a snowman. I thought that was great. But I remember when Ashton was little, he, uh, we had pulled up at this shopping center, and... Uh, he just wanted to run to the store. I mean, he, he was just learning to walk real good. He wanted to run to that store. What he didn't know was that there were other cars flying through the parking lot. What he didn't know was there were, you know, shards of glass on the concrete. There were places where the concrete was breaking up that he could easily slip, slide, fall on. So I made him hold his daddy's hand made him hold my hand and he couldn't understand it he was trying to get away I said, no but then all of a sudden his little foot hit some of that broken concrete and he slipped and you know what he didn't skin his knee he didn't break any bones he didn't get hurt because his daddy had his hand and because I kept him from hitting the ground he was okay. I was like, thanks, God. You know, I'm telling you, in this world, there are so many things that I can't see. There are so many obstacles. That it, b between here and heaven, I'm going to have to go through every valley. I'm going to have to go through every obstacle, every unforeseen thing. I'm going to have to go through it. If I'm going to make heaven my home, I'm going to go through it. But I don't have to go through it alone. That old song, Jesus, hold my hand. <laughs> Amen. He's got my hand. And no matter what I go through, he's able to hold me with his arms of love, his arms of righteousness. And I'm going to be okay. Now, I want to tell you something. If you're living for God and if you're doing your best to do what's right, God's got you. God's got you. It's going to be okay. God, I thank you for our church family. I thank you for your presence that I felt in this room. God, I pray that I've said something that would encourage someone tonight. God, help us to realize that we do not have to walk this earth alone. That you want to be there for us. You want to protect us. You want to love us. You want to help us. You want to encourage us. God, I speak it right now. I speak your strength, your help. Your direction, oh God. God, I pray for those that are fighting depression right now. I pray against that spirit. I pray against that spirit of being overwhelmed. I, I pray against that spirit of giving up. That's not the will of God. Don't give up. 
don't don't be so paralyzed with what you're going through and what you're facing that you can't move, that you're just stuck in one place. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. God, I speak liberty right now. God, I pray that that fear would fall to the ground right now. I pray that whatever is attacking your people would fall to the ground right now. God, help them. Uplift them. Encourage them. Help them to know everything's going to be okay in Jesus' name. God, we give you the glory. We give you the honor. We worship you, almighty God. Go with us, Lord. Bring us back together again safely. In the name of Jesus.